in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Born with the name Dolores Hicks in 1938, Dolores took the stage name Dolores Hart when she started her acting career as a young woman. And that career took off pretty fast. At the age of 18, she landed a part playing Elvis Presley's love interest in the 1957 movie Loving You. I wonder if anyone remembers that film. Famously, she gave Elvis his first on-screen kiss in that role. Dolores had important parts in nine more films over the next five years, playing opposite basically what you might call the Tom Cruises and Brad Pitts of her day. Then suddenly, at the age of 24, when she was engaged to be married and a rising Hollywood star, she announced she was leaving it all to become a nun. She later explained that she had a turning point when filming Francis of Assisi, in which she played St. Clair. She got to meet Pope St. John XXIII in Italy during the filming. And when she introduced herself, something really special happened. She said, I'm Dolores Hart, I'm, playing, uh, I'm the actress playing Claire, St. Clair. And the Pope looked at her, and just straight into her eyes, he said, No, you are St. Clair of Assisi. Her fans and her friends were in shock, angry even, when they heard the news. For years, apparently, one of the female actresses from Hollywood continued to write her angry letters trying to talk her out of throwing her life away. What was Sister Dolores' response? She sent one short letter to this angry friend, in which she wrote, If you heard what I hear, you would come too. Mother Dolores continues faithfully to this day as a Benedictine nun over in the US. And recently there was a documentary produced about her titled, God is the bigger Elvis. She gave her life to Christ in a very radical way, in a way that Jesus speaks about in our gospel today, right? And I want to mention another example of another lady with a similar story, a bit further in history. One of our local saints, uh, Saint Mildred of Thanet, whose feast day is coming up this month. And she, in fact, was a princess. She grew up in the 700s, but she was a princess. And like any princess, Mildred had the best education of her day. She came from a prestigious family with lots of connections in Europe. She was beautiful. And undoubtedly, many of the noble and wealthy young princes of Europe would want her hand in marriage. But all of this, this glamorous, comfortable lifestyle, St. Mildred rejected in order to completely possess and be possessed by Jesus Christ. She discovered that. I really like the title of Mother Dolores' book, God is the Bigger Elvis. What Sister Dolores and what St. Mildred discovered was that Jesus Christ is more attractive, more of a heartthrob, more to be infatuated with than even the most handsome or charming of men. Our Lord drew the heart of St. Mildred He whispered into her ear. He called her name. And the only possible response that she felt that she could give was to hand her life over to him entirely. And these two women, their response wasn't like a massively, as a result of something massively supernatural that happened to them. They basically both grasped that Jesus had died for them, that he had given his life up for them. He had rescued them from original sin, saved them from hell by his sacrifice on the cross, and they wanted to offer him their lives in return. I think probably for both of those women, their friends would have thought they were insane when they entered the convent. But the fact is, if Christianity is true, and it is true, then the one who is insane is the one who believes all this stuff, or says they believe this stuff, and yet offer our Lord so little in return. Of course, we probably aren't called to retreat from the world like these women, but we are called to make a similar gift of ourselves and our lives to the Lord. And that's the thing. 
our lives, even if they are lived in this world and only in some convent, they also have to be radical offerings to Jesus. Our commitment to him should be totally obvious to us. It should be totally obvious to those around us and above all, totally obvious to God. The words that our Lord says in the gospel today are meant to shock us. Listen, he's saying that we must be committed to him so much that every other good and wholesome relationship in our life seems as nothing when compared to our commitment to him and the Catholic faith he founded. Think about this. It's what St. Mildred uh, and what Dolores Hart gave up that demonstrated their commitment to our Lord. That was the proof that her commitment had a concrete impact on her life. They gave up marriage, possessions, riches. So ask yourself, what is there in your life that has been given up or is continually being given up as a sign of your faith and your commitment to Christ? Here's a kind of thought experiment. If your friend told you that he was absolutely certain that a particular horse was going to win the Grand National, 100%, 100% certain. He would be able to tell how seriously you took his certainty by looking at what you would be willing to gamble on the horse. If you said to him, sure, I'm going to put a tenner on that horse to win, he would know that you doubted him. You know, you don't really take him seriously. But if you're willing to remortgage your house, he would know that you trusted him entirely. We all say that we know Jesus Christ is our saviour and that following him is the only way to heaven. But how much are you gambling on this? How much have you staked on this truth? How much have you committed yourself to it? Look over your life right now. How different would your life look if you weren't a Catholic? Sure, we are all gambling one hour of our week at this moment by coming to Holy Mass. We're all doing that. But you know what? Betting an hour's wage on that horse, that wouldn't be much of a sign of confidence uh, that this horse was definitely going to win. Your friend wouldn't be impressed. I wouldn't be impressed by that. Moreover, Jesus makes it clear in the Gospel that we should be staking, essentially, our entire lives on this pivotal issue, the truth of the Catholic faith, the truth of our Lord's divinity. And that's why he says, anyone who loses his life for my sake will save it for eternity. What else in your life could be given over to Christ? What changes can you make to your life to make your gamble on Jesus more evident? Obviously, the degree to which you invest yourself in terms of my money and time uh, in this parish is a kind of uh, expression to Jesus of what he means to you because you're risking, you're risking on him and the truth of the Catholic faith by helping in the parish because the parish is an outpost of the Catholic faith in our area. But beyond thinking about that, think about your daily schedule. The degree to which your daily schedule is filled with prayer time and spiritual reading and daily mass and maybe watching Catholic stuff on YouTube, all those things are signs to Jesus that you are investing in him, that you are wagering your life upon him, that you are fulfilling what he asks of you to spend your life on him. Obviously, also things like following the church's teaching on marriage and family. That's a massive way of showing that you are willing to sacrifice a lot of comforts uh, in order to follow Christ's teachings more faithfully. At one place in the Gospel, Jesus pronounces that those who give up things for him will be greatly rewarded. In fact, he says you'll be rewarded a hundredfold for all your sacrifices. And there's no investment out there which gives you a return as good as that. And it made me wonder, what would that look like in eternity? What will a hundredfold look like for the 15 minutes doing the daily rosary? 
Or what will a hundredfold look like for the time that you choose not to watch something on YouTube that might offend God, some impure video or something? Or, um, and what will it look like, the hundredfold, when you miss out on some family party because you're unwilling to neglect fulfilling your Sunday obligation? What's that hundredfold going to look like? We don't know, but it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be amazing, that's for sure. The bigger the sacrifice, the bigger the reward. Whatever you put in, our Lord will multiply it by a hundred. Dearest Lord, help me to be bold enough to risk my life on you, to go all in. I know that this is what you ask of me. Give me the grace and the courage to follow it through so that I can be sure of saving my soul and inheriting the great reward that you promise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.